Okay, we're going to continue. Thanks for closing the window. Wonderful. And Camille is going to tell us a bit about Lucene upgrading in Jira 8. Okay, let's start. Uh, good afternoon uh, and welcome to the talk about Lucene Upgrade in Jira 8 uh, with a catchy title, How We Fought and Killed the Cope Debt Beast. Uh, my name is Kamil Ciche. I work uh, for Spartes uh, in Gdańsk in Poland as a software developer working on Jira server. And uh, you probably know the company Atlassian. is the company uh, behind products such as Jira Confluence and uh, Bitbucket and other tools that let your teams collaborate more efficiently. And Spartus is a very close partner of Atlassian, and we help them develop products such as Jira, Bamboo, uh, Fisheye, and Crucible. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, and this talk will be about Jira. Uh, does anybody in here use Jira? <laughs> Almost everybody. <laughs> that's, that's very nice to see. Um, so I don't have to really explain. It's an issue tracker and project management tool. You can put everything uh, in Jira, and then you can manage uh, your issues, saying what's in progress, uh, what's been done, what's still left to do, uh, and um, and everybody is on the same page thanks to that. But as soon as you have more than say ten issues, you need an efficient way to find them, and uh, this is why search is so important in Jira. Uh, we even have our own language called JQL, where you can put attributes of issues, and um, and then, based on that, uh, Jira will return you the result. Um, and even this board, uh, uh, which shows you the sprint, this is backed by, sprint, by search as well. So search is uh, the crucial part of Jira. This search is based on uh, Lucene. Um, so we have an index, and we put uh, all of the fields there. So we have system fields, which are the ones that come with Jira out of the box such as summary, description, comments, who created that issue, who is uh, assigned to it. But we also have uh, custom fields, which uh, can be configurable by admin, and they can choose uh, from what Jira uh, provides, uh, fields like dates or uh, text, numbers, but also they can be extendable by plugins. So plugin vendors can uh, provide any type of custom field uh, you can dream of. And apart Whoops, sorry for that. Uh, and apart from that, uh, a very important part of uh, the index is permissions, because in Jira uh, you cannot see everything potentially, uh, because there might be permissions uh, just for some people uh, to see certain issues. And uh, this has to be handled by the search engine, because uh, otherwise it would be too, small, too slow if we went to the database uh, to ask whether you can see this particular result or not. And let's move to the, uh, to the main part of this talk, uh, which is Lucene Upgrade, because it's so important. Uh, we should be really up to date with what Lucene offers us. Um, in fact, um, we tell our clients to update Jira regularly. We say, uh, get the latest version, get uh, bug fixes, get new features. But unfortunately, we don't always pray as we preach. And if you look at Jira 7, it comes with Lucene 3.3. Which was, um, which was released in 2011. To make matters worse, it's a Dash Atlassian Dash 2 version, uh, which uh, contains two, two crucial bug fixes ported from version 4. So you might wonder why we are using such an old version. And this is down to what happened with Lucene between versions 3 and 4. Uh, the API was uh, broken uh, in a backwards incompatible way. And this meant that the upgrade was non-trivial. I'm not saying it was a bad decision uh, because the new API is better, but for us, uh, it required effort to upgrade, so it was put off for some better time in the future. And uh, this time uh, took uh, seven years. <laughs> uh, with time, uh, this upgrade project looked like uh, climbing a high mountain. So we started here at the bottom with Lucene 3.3, and there was this shiny Lucene 7.2 at the top, but how do we get up there? First, we meet some dead bodies of people who try to upgrade in the future. <laughs> they spend maybe a day or two uh, to upgrade, but, uh, oh, sorry, this clicker is very strange. Sorry for that. Um, so they, they try to upgrade, they spend maybe a day or two, uh, but, um, 
but they failed because it, it wasn't uh, doable in such a short time. And then there's lots of old code that nobody has touched for years. And then there were unknown gains. Uh, imagine coming your, to, to your product manager and saying, we would like to upgrade Lucene. It's going to take maybe a month, maybe six months. We don't really know. We don't know if, if it's going to be any better. Uh, let's do it. Uh, it's not an easy sell, uh, as you can see. Then there was this new Lucene API, which we didn't know when we started because we were stuck on the old one. So we had to learn uh, on the way. And uh, lastly, very important, is the impact of, on app uh, vendors. So plugins can use uh, Lucene Index in Jira. Uh, and when we upgrade uh, Lucene, they have to upgrade their plugins as well. And there is a big ecosystem of plugins uh, on Atlassian Marketplace and uh, people writing their own plugins internally. And uh, all of those who used Lucene in a more advanced way had to upgrade, which meant that we could only upgrade Lucene in a major version like uh, Jira 8.0, which is coming uh, out in a few days. So we went for it. The expectations were rather low. Uh, let's just make it not any worse than it was. And uh, let's be more up to date so then we can get some help online, for example, for Stack Overflow if we have a problem. There are probably mm, more people who know the current Lucene than those who remember what happened seven years ago. Uh, Effort-wise, it took two developers three weeks just to make the code compile with the new Lucene, <laughs> then another month to, t to make unit and functional tests green, and then the whole team jumped in, and we spent six months. Uh, this is not just to uh, make it work. Uh, we took the momentum that we had, and uh, we decided to use as much as we could from Lucene uh, to make search and indexing uh, in Jira better. Um, so we wanted to catch the benefits of what the new Lucene gave us. So this is what we did on Jira platform. So this is the, the, the base. But then uh, there are products built on top of that, such as Jira Service Desk, Jira Portfolio, uh, and also there are those, those plug-in vendors, and they had to put effort in as well. So you can see it wasn't a very uh, simple operation. And do, you th do I think it was worth it? Yes, with the benefit of hindsight, I think it was worth the effort. Um, indexing is now two and a half times faster, which means uh, when you set up uh, Jira from a backup or when you need to re-index because you changed the configuration uh, in a major way, uh, you get s uh, shorter downtime. And also, uh, you need less infrastructure to run Jira, uh, which means you need to pay less money for your hardware. Uh, then index is twice smaller, then you need less disk space, uh, and search is uh, five times faster. This is, these are the numbers we get from our testing instance. We have one million issue uh, instance where we run automated tests, um, but that one doesn't have any applications on top of that and plugins, so your mileage might vary and, uh, and the results might be slightly different for you. And I couldn't resist to take a very liberal approach to statistics. I took an average of these three numbers, and in total, Jira is <laughs> 3.17 uh, times better than the old one. But apart from these numbers, uh, that's not everything. Um, Optimize is now gone in the uh, in, in new Lucene. And to understand uh, how it worked in the past, we need to look at segments. So this shows us segments of Lucene. Once you index something, it becomes immutable. And the only thing you can do to it you can, is to remove documents, mark documents as deleted. When you add new issues, you create new segments. Then you add more segments, and when you have too many segments, you merge them. Uh, so after uh, full index of Jira, the index would look like that. But in Lucene 3.3, uh, there was this method called optimize. And if I asked any of you, would you like your index to be optimal? Everybody would go, yes, let's go for it. So we did the optimize. What it did was merge everything into one big segment. And um, that meant that you didn't have to go to different files when searching. So in some sense, it was a bit better. But the problem was, when you added new issues or modifications, you had these new segments, uh, but they were so much smaller than the big one, they could never be merged together. Then you uh, started uh, uh, deletes from the big one, but it was still too large to be merged. Uh, and that was, that was a problem. And uh, if we now compare, because now this optimize is gone, uh, we can compare Jira 7 to Jira 8 uh, performance-wise. Um, if you look at this, 
actually, when we first measured, Jira 8 was slower than Jira 7. Uh, we took our 1 million issues. Uh, we ran the test of searching by text, very simple, uh, simple test. And it took only 200 milliseconds in Jira 7, but it took almost 400 milliseconds in Jira 8. Um, that was not what we expected, was it? Uh, but then we recalled that optimize, and we thought, okay, um, Jira 7 was merged into one segment. So what if we, we apply a week of work, say, updates to the issues, commenting, uh, creating new issues, and you rerun the same search again? Uh, this is what happened to Jira 7. It degraded very badly, while Jira 8 uh, is, uh, is intact. And this is a big pain uh, for Jira 7 customers. Uh, because they have this optimized index, uh, which means that the index over the weekend, it works fine on Monday, but by the time Friday comes, it really slows down. So they have a weekly routine to re-index Jira, and now, now this problem is, uh, is gone, and they can enjoy new Jira. Uh, that was searched by text. If you search by assignee, which is simpler, uh, they start head to head. Uh, but then again, seven degrades, uh, while well, uh, 8 uh, stays intact. If you search by created date, Jira 8 is three times faster, and that is because now we index dates as numbers rather than as text, and doing range queries on numbers is faster than doing range queries on strings. And again, there was degradation in Jira 7. Uh, another thing that we got with the new Lucene, actually we lost again, was field cache. Uh, field cache was this data structure that answered uh, the question, what is the value of my field across all documents? So for example, what is the value of uh, the assignee in all my issues? And the problem with this was twofold. First, it was calculated on demand, so you'd have to scan your index and, uh, and put that. And the second problem was where you put it. You put it on heap. Uh, which meant uh, that your heap, uh, heap usage was increasing over time. And as ever good cache, it was never freed in Jira. Uh, so now this is gone, uh, so we had to move to the new thing, which is dog values. It's more or less the same mechanism, but it's built during indexing. And uh, when you need it, it's already there. You just uh, pull it from the disk uh, once, you, once you need it. And uh, as soon as you don't need it anymore, the OS will swap it out uh, for you, so uh, there will be no impact on uh, on GC. Mm. Another thing that we got uh, improved was resiliency. Uh, Jira 7 compared to Jira 3 uh, is more resilient when it comes to uh, abrupt uh, failures uh, of your machine. So in Jira 3, when you are indexing something and the power went off, you might end up with corrupted index, and uh, that would lead to uh, well, the index was corrupted, so you had to re-index it. And for our biggest customers, that would be a week of outage of Jira. Uh, and Jira 7 uh, now doesn't have this problem. Uh, and there is a funny story uh, that I heard from Uwe about Mike McCandles, who was testing uh, this uh, new Lucene uh, that it cannot be corrupted. So he set up two machines, and one machine was controlling the power outlet of the other machine. He was indexing something and pulling the plug and then making sure that the index was was not corrupted. And uh, this is something that you get uh, when you update libraries. Somebody did the hard work, and you, you get it. So it's always a good idea to upgrade. And uh, we did work on our side as well. Uh, when Jira has a new issue or an issue update, uh, we put that on a queue of issues to be, uh, to be indexed. But when, uh, when your machine dies, uh, sometimes Jira lost that queue. And now we improve that so, uh, so everything will be in your index when you, when you restart Jira. And uh, the last uh, big change that we did was, uh, was around permissions. Um, permissions, uh, as I told you, is a big thing in Jira. It's a very flexible mechanism. You can, you can say everybody can see your issues. Or you can say only people who are logged into your application can see issues. Or only people, uh, only the project lead, the person who reported it, and the person who is assigned to it. Uh, can see those issues, or only members of a group can see uh, that issue, or only members of a group which is set to a value of a custom field on that issue can see that issue. And all of that has to be handled uh, by, uh, by the index. So to understand the change, let's have a look at a very simple model of an issue. It has a project. Uh, it's in project two. 
it's a summary improved permissions. It's assigned to Uwe. You will soon learn why. And then it has custom field one with value group two. And this is what we need for searching. But uh, we now added a new field, project permissions, where we index combination, combinations of these values. Uh, so we index uh, P2 for project, P2 assignee Uwe for pair of project and assignee, and then P2 custom field one group two for the pair of project and custom field. And now let's see how, how the search looks like. Say I'm searching for uh, summary is like permissions. This is what I want to see. Um, but on top of that, Jura needs to add a permission query which will limit the results to what I am allowed to see. We'll be building two permission queries, one uh, in the old style, uh, which will be a Boolean query, and the new one, which will be a term in set query. Term in set is a, a query which will match as long as there is one element in the query that matches one element that was indexed in the new field project permissions. Uh, so uh, we'll be following my artificial uh, project permissions uh, scheme. So uh, let's say I'm allowed to see issues from project one. In the old way, it would be just project one. And in the new way, we add value uh, to the terms in set query saying P1. And then I'm also allowed to see issues from project two, which are assigned to me. So then that will be project two and assignee equals Camille. In the new world, it's it's one term which says P2 as any Kami. Then I'm also allowed to see issues in project two as long as I'm a member of a group in that custom field. So say I'm a member of three groups, group one, two, and three. So the Boolean query becomes project two and custom field group one, group two, or group three. In the new one, we flatten that. We explode the Boolean query to, uh, to uh, terms. Uh, so they become single terms rather than combinations of, of, uh, of, of a Boolean. And this one matches. You can see that project two and custom field one uh, equals group two matches what we have in the issue. And in the new mechanism, I clicked, but it didn't move. In the new mechanism, you can see that the term uh, matches uh, what we index under project permissions. So I would be able to see that issue in both, in both cases. Then we can go for project three, uh, which has the same permissions, and project four, which has a different, uh, different permission scheme. Um, this might look complicated. Uh, in fact, it's a rather simple query. It has four projects, and I'm a member of three groups. Imagine in real life there would be a 1,000 projects, and I would be a member of, say, 50 groups. The query would become huge. Um, and then Jira, uh, sorry, Lucine had to go to these ands and ors, and ors and ands, trying to evaluate that against your issue. And that, uh, that was slower. And looking at this, uh, they, to, to, to your eyes, they, they might look similar in size. But this one is much easier to evaluate, because it's just a set of terms. And you need to find a common value between these two. And as soon as you find one, you're done. Um, so this one is, uh, is faster. And in fact, it's actually five times faster when, you, when we compared uh, running search just before we merged that fix and just after it became uh, five times faster. Uh, I cannot, we cannot take all the credit for this idea, uh, which moves us to the next, um, to the next topic, which is partnership with Uwe. When we started our journey uh, up that mountain of upgrading Lucene, we decided to uh, get some help, uh, external help from a consultant who knew Lucene. We reached to a company named Flux, and they directed us to Uwe. Uh, Uwe came on site. And uh, we spent a week uh, with him. Uh, first, he gave us lectures, what has changed between Lucene uh, 3 and 7. And then we spent three days looking at our code um, uh, to see how, how, we can, how we can improve it. And some of you might be worried that uh, when you uh, when you invite an expert, you need to have questions. But the good thing about working with experts is you don't need yes, no questions. You can just show them your problems, and they'll come up with solutions. For example, the permission, uh, the new permission query is an idea by Uwe. Um, we just told him our our permission is slow. Can you can you think of something better? Uh, also, um, when thank you when you um, work with experts, they will tell you what not to do. For example, uh, 
every issue has ID, which is a number, and we wanted to change that to be no longer a string, but a, uh, a number in Lucene. But Uwe told us that uh, what Lucene has been doing for the past 10 years is searching for strings, so that's much more optimized than searching for numbers. Searching for numbers is actually a range query, uh, so when you look for an exact value, it's better to keep it as a string, even though it's a number. Uh, and this is something that we, we, we wouldn't have known if we, if we hadn't uh, uh, spoken with Uwe. And we probably would have fallen into that trap. Uh, in the future, because Jira is much better now than it was, but it's, uh, it's always a constant, a constant work to improve it, uh, we want to improve the way we manage indexing DC. So when you have multiple uh, Jira nodes, so instances of Jira which share one database, but they have their own local indexes. Um, we, we, we have a mechanism to copy the index between nodes if, if there is a failure of one node, and we want to improve that. Also, we want to increase the uh, indexing speed because uh, we identified some, uh, some inefficiencies in the way we index, and we need to um, improve um, our APIs because currently a plugin can run a query on Jira saying, give me all one million issues uh, sorted at once and that can bring the instance down. So we need to find a way how to, uh, how to avoid that. At the same time, not stop the functionality of, of, uh, of those plugins. And if you find any of this interesting, we are always uh, hungry for, uh, for talents. Uh, so go to spartus.com and slash careers. And I would like to leave you with three thoughts. Uh, it's always good to ask someone who knows rather than reinvent the wheel. So whether it's your colleague or a consultant that you need to pay, it's probably worth the money. Paying off code debt pays off. So uh, when you pay your mortgage, you don't get anything new in return. You just stay in your house. But when you pay off code debt, um, uh, you, you can get more results than you actually expected. And the last one is never lose hope in your code. Uh, even if you haven't done something for, say, seven years, uh, and you think there is no way you can get out of, of code debt, uh, there is hope. Our example shows that it is possible. Uh, thank you. I think we have, we have three minutes for questions. And I brought some t-shirts for those who ask questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the question is, uh, would it be worth uh, to use Elasticsearch instead of Lucene? Um, it, it, would, it would probably be. We, we are considering that, but it would be a much bigger change than this upgrade uh, to, to the way the Jira is deployed and so on. Uh, so um, we would, uh, it would work with the multi-instance uh, multi Jira, for example, DC, where you have multiple nodes, uh, then you would have just one Elasticsearch uh, infrastructure. But uh, we need to see whether it's worth the effort in terms of, uh, of the operation. So this t-shirt is taken. <laughs> Next. <laughs> uh, I guess this was about Jira server or data center, but what about Jira cloud? So in Jira... the biggest difference between how the indexing works between... In Jira cloud, they, uh, they have a different mechanism based on Postgres because uh, in Jira... Um, Jira server, we don't know what the database would be. It might be uh, Postgres, might be Oracle, uh, might be other database. So we have the index. But in Jira Cloud, they have, um, they know it's Postgres, so they can optimize the search on Postgres, and they don't need Lucene at all. So how did you sell the project to your product manager after all? <laughs> um, the question is how we sold it to the product manager. Seven people for six months. Um, yeah, the question is uh, how we sold it if it took uh, six months of work. Uh, well, we told them it's going to take three weeks. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but then we, ju we just said uh, um, what are the possible improvements, how it can fix uh, problems uh, of clients which, um, which uh, are running into issues such as this degrading index and so on. So uh, we told them it's not just our idea, uh, just to just to be 
I know, better developers, it, we, we convince them it, it's going to improve the product.